Hello class, welcome to section 1.2. This is where you're doing kind of the language of algebra. So there's gonna be some where it's gonna change from um, words to numbers or numbers to words and you have to be able to interpret it. So for addition, you're gonna get something like A plus B and that's how it's gonna be written. So the way to write that out is A plus B and it could also be the sum of A and B. That, those are gonna be the main two ways that you see addition written. For subtraction, it's gonna be something like written like this, A minus B. So the way you write that, again, there's gonna be two ways, A minus B, or it could be difference of A and B. Note that the A is first in the um, expression, and it's also first here. Make sure you do it like that, and don't say difference of B and A. It, um, other ways that you might see it is A less B, um, whenever you see the word fewer, a lot of times you're going to have that. Now with multiplication, there are multiple ways to write multiplication. It could be A times B with the dot. It could just be AB. It could be A in parentheses and then B. And then it could be A with B in parentheses. And it could be A, B with each in separate parentheses. All of these mean the same thing. And the way to write that is A times B or product of A and B. Whenever you see product, that means um, multiplying. Also, whenever you see the word of, that means you're going to multiply. Now division, that one's gonna have quite a few ways to write it. Um, pay very close attention to this one um, because I believe that this is what's gonna be, there is one like this on the test um, just with actual numbers. So the way you could write this is A divided by B, A slash B, A over B, or B, into A like this. All of these mean the same thing. And they are A divided by B. Um, it could also be quotient of A and B. Again, notice that here quotient of and then the two um, numbers. The first one is whatever is on top. The second one is which is on bottom. Um, you could also be um, A divided B. Um, sometimes they don't put this word by. So it could be A divided B and then equals something. Um, on this, A is the dividend and B is the divisor. Uh, it's not really that important um, in this class to learn those. You use them sometimes, but not as much. Okay, so next um, we're going to look at the difference. Um, we're gonna uh, let's say that we have two x plus three. We would write that exactly the way I said it. Two x plus three. Um, if we ever see an equal sign in there, that means that it's an equation. Equation means that something is equal. If we see no equal sign, then it's just an expression. So if we just had the 2x plus 3, that's an expression. If, however, 
we said it equals um, 7. Now it becomes an equation because there is the equal sign here. Next, um, we're going to have um, different ways to write inequalities. We could say A does not equal B, which is A is not equal to B. We could say A less than B, which means A is less than B. We could have this, where we have the line under the um, less than sign, which is A is less than or equal to B. So if we had A less than or equal, or let's say five less than or equal to six, that would be correct. Or five less than or equal to five, that would also be correct. Okay, we can also have A is greater than B. And we could have A is greater than or equal to B. Okay, so those are the main ways that we'll see some of those. In this section, we'll also see um, order of operations. Order of operations, um, you probably remember, is PEMDAS, but what I do is a little bit different. So this means parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Multiplication and division are done together and addition and subtraction are done together. So I'll often put these little two hats. So what that means is that um, at the same time you do all the multiplication and divisions from left to right. So if we have two plus eight divided by two times four plus four squared. If we have something like this, what we're gonna do first, we don't have parentheses, but we do have exponents. So I'm gonna do the four squared. So we keep two plus eight divided by two times four plus 16. Now what we do is the divisions and the multiplications together. So eight divided by two is four times four, which is 16. Um, a lot of people may have done the two times four first and got eight divided by eight, which would be one. So you're gonna get totally different answers if you do them in the different order. So we're gonna say two plus eight divided by two is four, times four is 16, plus 16. And now we're just gonna add them all up and get 34. So make sure you do things in the right order. And that's going to be something that you're going to use throughout the class and the next class. Next, I want to show you something where things aren't um, what a mistake that some people might make. So let's say we have 2 plus 5 in parentheses, the whole thing squared. That does not equal 2 squared plus five squared. So don't ever do that. Do what's in the parentheses before you square what's outside. And to prove this, I'm going to say, um, what I'm going to do is each one. What you do here is two plus five is seven squared, which is 49. If you did this, you're going to get two squared is four and five squared is 25, which equals 29. Oh, this is 49, sorry. 49 does not equal 29. So don't ever um, do this where you uh, act this one out or do this at, where you break it up like that. We'll see later in the class what we will do for those. 
Okay, then you're gonna get some um, problems where you're gonna get um, some equa or expressions and you have to kind of substitute a number in. So let's say we have 9x minus 4y and it says to figure it out when x is 3 and y is negative 7. So what we're gonna do there is just plug in the 3 for the x and the negative 7 for y. So I'm gonna say 9 times 3 minus 4 times negative 7. 9 times 3 is 27 and we have a minus 4 times a negative 28 becomes, now it's gonna be a negative, so I'm gonna just say negative 28. A negative times negative is positive, so 27 plus 28, and that equals 55. Other ways to do that would just say negative times negative and turn that into positive. That's the way I normally would do it myself. This just shows a little bit of an extra step. Okay, so then let's say that we have x squared plus y to the 3 minus z when x equals negative 10, y equals 6, and z equals negative 7. So I'm going to plug everything in. Make sure you put your parentheses. So I'm going to have a negative 10, that whole thing squared, plus 6 raised to the 3 minus a negative 7. Okay, so negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100, plus 6 raised to the 3 is 216. Negative times negative is plus 7. So now we're going to have... 100 plus 216 is 316 plus 7 is 323. All right, so next, let's say that we have something with a little bit more. Negative 3 x squared plus 9 y squared when x is negative three and y is negative four. Again, use your parentheses here. So negative three and the negative three is in parentheses squared plus nine. Oh, keep that, do the y squared and negative four squared. So now we're gonna keep the negative three because we do the exponents first. Negative three squared becomes positive nine we have a plus 9, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So now we can do our multiplications. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, plus 9 times 16 is 144. So we have negative 27 plus 144, which is 117. Uh, notice on... Um, some things, and I think this is going to be more in section 1.4, but there's a big difference between 3 squared, negative 3 squared, and negative 3 in parentheses squared. The exponent only affects what's directly in front of it. So here, 3 squared is just 9. This one, negative, this becomes negative 3 times negative 3 which equals positive nine. This one here, however, is negative three times three, which equals a negative nine. If there is no parenthesis, um, we're here, but there's a negative, your answer is gonna be negative. If the negative is inside the parenthesis, then that means the answer is gonna be positive because what you're multiplying is a negative three times negative three. Here, it's just the three part is the only one that's squared, not the negative, because it's not in the parentheses. Then you're gonna have some word problems that all you have to do is turn it into a math problem. So it'll be something like nine times a number 
is that number minus five. So nine times a number is that number minus five. It's gonna tell you what letter to use. I'm gonna use X for this, but nine times a number just becomes nine X. Is always means equals. And then that number, which again is just gonna be X and then minus five. And that's all it's asking you to do here. It's not telling you to um, solve for it. The last one I'm gonna do will be something like 18 more than six times a number results in seven. So more than means you're adding. Six times means you're multiplying. So it's gonna be more, whenever it has a number and then more than, put it afterwards. Likewise, if we had 18 less than, so six times the number is first, six X, and then plus 18. If this had said 18 less than six times the number, it would be 16 minus, or six X minus 18. Make sure you put it in the right order. Results in is another way to say equals, and then it just equals seven. So let's just say that this had been less we would say 6x minus 18 results in seven. And remember, like we did earlier in this section, a quotient of a number and a number, um, say quotient of x and, or of a number and three would be x over three. All right, that is it for section 1.2.